Asante sana kwa Bwana. I would want us to pray so that we can have we can start off and continue with the word. Precious Father, we thank you for being so gracious and so kind to us. Your faithfulness we count and we thank you so much. The week has ended and now it's another good precious time you have given us to gather and with the hunger and the thirst for you. You have allowed us to share this word, the bread of life. May you cause it therefore to nourish us and may you build us up, may you teach us, encourage us and take us where you want us to be. We give you praise, we give you honor for all that are watching and, and uh, listening to us. May your blessings multiply to each one of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Tuneza tukaka na buwana tubaliki sana. Nigari ni meyokoka na shukuru buwana kwa neema abaya menipatia ya kuzidi kuedelea katika imani. To his name be the glory. And so... It's another interesting time that we are having to look into great victories. Abazo Bona Lidetea Watotoake wa Israeli, Kupitia Joshua. We are now into Joshua chapter 12, Tulifikisha 12, Hatuku Soma Sana. And I desire that today, Tutaindelea, Na hizo chapters mbili, Ama tatu, Abazo Zikombeli, Mahali Bona Tatunemesha. Na tuli, Sema kwamba iki kitabu cha Joshua it's a very, very interesting book kwa sababu ni katika iki kitabu tunaona the promises that God made to his people being fulfilled na sio zile two promises alikuwa ameabia Musa ni nyingi hata abazo alikuwa amesema na Abraham way back into Genesis 14:15 tunaona zikitimia moja kwa moja and we thank God and Tukasema kwamba iki kitabu kimegawanishwa generally into three sections. Section ya kwanza ni wakati Joshua wameingia kwenye shamba ama the land. They have entered into the land of Canaan. Arafu, the second section is they conquered the land. They conquered the land and now thirdly they subdivide or they settle. Kwa hivyo kuna vila waliingia, kuna vila walipigana wakakonga, alafu sasa wanagawana, wanagawana shamba kama jinsi Mungu alikuwa ameelekeza Musa. Na sasa hiki kita, uh, mahali tumefika, tumekwisha maliza kuona jinsi waliingia through Jordan, vila waliingia through Jordan wakiwa wanatembea miguu, alafu sasa tukaona vile tumekuwa tukiangalia jinsi vita vimekuwa nyingi wakipigana na adui zao. Na tukaona kwa jumla walipigana na wafalme 30 na moja. That one of the kings. Uh, alafu sasa tunaona wakigawana ile shaba. Sasa wamekwisha maliza ni kama wale watu unaida mawindoni. Swara wamemsha mkibiza, wamemkamata na sasa ni kumgawana. Sasa shaba lote liko uh, mikononi mwao. They are subdividing the land. And... Something also interesting to note ni kwa Joshua is just a normal person. He's just a common man. A very, very common man. Na tunamuona hata wakati mungu anamuita. He's a common man. Actually, who needs to be encouraged to carry on and to be bold? He's a common man. But we see him doing uncommon things. Katika kongaling the land, na katika kuigia kule, kwanza tunaona wanapitia Jordan ikiwa ni kama nchikavu. Na saa hizo, Jordan, it you had already overflooded. Sababu ilikuwa msimu uh, wabondi wa overflooding. Lakini tunamona wanavuka. Kana kwamba it's a, it's a dry land. Arafu tunamona wanaanza ku wakaikeda Jericho. Jericho hawa kupigana na mikuki, kukafanyika kitu very uncommon. So the crossing of Jordan was very uncommon. Conquering of Jericho, very uncommon. Tunaona wakipigana na AI pia very uncommon. Tunaona wakipigana na wale wengine Mungu ilibidi awananyashe mawe something very uncommon. All these are uncommon things that are happening to and through a very common man. And I looked at it and nikasema surely this is what God does. 
God has created us very limited. Lakini Mungu hayuko desperate kwamba alitutengeneza watu very limited. We are very insufficient. Hatuna nguvu nyingi. Hatuna mambo makubwa makubwa. I even thought so a guy like Samson maybe he was not so masculine. Samson kwa sababu ingekuwa alikuwa wale wa majitu majitu akuge kuwa na haja ya Mungu kumpatia ile nguvu divine. So maybe he was a common man but God used him divinely. And so ndio nikaona pia Joshua. A common man lakini kwa sababu Mungu kuna mission yake pale Mungu anamtumia kwa jia ya kitofauti sana. And that is you and that is me. With your weaknesses, with my weaknesses, with our incapabilities, God will not stop doing whatever he said he will. Na hii basi inatuonesha na kutudhibitishia vizuri kwamba the mission of God is beyond human capacity. Vile Mungu amepanga kufanya hata kwa maisha yako haiwezi katimizwa na nguvu za mwanadamu. Kwa hivyo hata sisi wote tukiungana tukusaidie we will not accomplish the mission of God in your life. So God will have to make a way for his divine power to manifest like he did to Joshua. Joshua was just a common man, lakini tumeona Mungu amefanya mambo yasiyo ya kawaida kupitia yeye. Lakini mahali tumefika good to note Mahali tumefika sasa kwe, kutoka chapter 11 kuendelea I mean chapter 12 Now this is a common man Joshua but he is doing a very common job Ni kama wazee wale wa kijiji ama wazee pia wa huku wako na watoto wake na sasa imefika wakati wa kuagawia shamba That man do not need a divine strength to do that Ya yeah, najua tu wewe chukua hii shamba wewe ni hii anajua shamba yake ni yaka tatu na niko na vijana watatu Kwa hivyo hapo hapo hapa sipo a divine power you know kila kila kijana anaenda na ika moja moja. And so Joshua mahali amefika he is a common man and now it's like kitabu mahali tumefika kilikuwa kimeenda juu tunaona victories mambo ya kiungu the book is interesting mpaka mahali tumeanza sasa kuona anafanya mambo ya kawaida kugawanisha shamba. That is common view to us. But do you know what it is not as common as we may see it. Kwa sababu, igekua so common, God would not have found it important to come into his word. And so, why are we studying this thing that looks very common? It may not be full of the interesting stories, the Jericho, the Jordan, but we can see something else. Hapa diyo tutaona majina ya vijiji vijiji, abayo mengini ata kutamuka nishida. Na mtu ya naeza fikiria. Kwa nini sasa hivi vijiji mungu anadika hapa? Anatuadikia majina watu wengine. Kaido fata tuki ya soma sasa hivi. Tukitoka kwa mlango. Tutakuwa tumesahau. How does it profit? To God it is important. Ni kama kwa mfano tuulizane hapa kwa ukweli. Igekua ni jina yako uyone kwa Bible. See that now to you it would be very important. Ama kijiji ya kwenu. Na vile vijiji vingine kama vya kwenu vina majina fani. Uyone pale kwenye Bible imeandiko. Ama siyo Bible gazeti. Uwene kwa gazeti kijiji ya kwenu. It is very interesting. And so there is a purpose that God had. Na kaona atumia wale watu ya likuepo. Na hizo majina zao. So that we can learn something. And so the story now seems very common. But it, there is something else that we can learn. Generally kwa sababu hatu taiza kusoma verse by verse. Kwa sababu hizo majina nyingi. The whole thing that is rotating ni... Shaba sasa wako nayo Sasa ni kugawanisho Kama vile tu mungu alikuwa mesema na Musa Akasema, you remember tukisoma kitabu cha numbers Wakati hawa watoto waligawanisho na wakahesabiwa Kuna zile tribes, especially the tribe of Judah Ilikuwa na watu wengi sana Na kuna kabila bazo zilikuwa na watu wachache sana Musa alikuwa mealekezwa na mungu Na akamuachia Joshua Akamwambia Joshua Wakati mtakapo ichukua ile shamba yote Mwa the land the way mtagawanishwa, mtagawanisha, ni every large tribe ipoke shaba kubwa. Lakini as tupa, nani yataeda wapi, nani yataka wapi, iyo mtafanya na lot. Sababu yu igefanya wapi gani, sababu shaba haifanani. So iyo watar, watarusha kura. Lakini as tupa, nani yataeda na shaba kubwa, nani kidogo, iyo itategemea na wingi wa watu kwenye kabila frani. Kwa hivyo, generally that is what we are going to see in chapter 12. Tuone hii shaba walipea but we are going to see some uh, very important lessons 
ambazo nitazitaja tukiendelea. Kwa hivyo nitasoma kidogo alafu tunaruka na tunaelekea mahali maybe tunaweza tukapata lesson ambayo itakuwa applicable so much today. And tukiogea mambo haya ya Joshua tulisema wewe usifoka so much into history, focus into, into what God is doing now in your life because the battles that we are fighting now are not physical. Na hata ile yale mashaba Mungu anatu, anatuabia hapa it is not so much physical. However much tugehitaji na tunatarajia na tunaoba Mungu atupatie physical blessings we have to focus on to the spiritual blessings or the spiritual promises abazo Mungu ametupatia. And so kwenye hiki kitabu cha Joshua because the main topic is land and the main topic is inheritance that word liokas those two words liokas too much actually the word land appears 85 times in the book of Joshua and inherit or inheritance appears 60 times so generally we are talking about a land shaba mungu amepeana and in because they now they are now inheriting so let's now focus on to ourselves in the new testament god has given us something just like he gave these people the land the physical land geographical land what has god given to us that is our main topic today the promises of god mungu amekupa ahadi gani katika ulimwengu wa rohoni utajiri wa roho mungu ametugawanishia baraka nyingi and there are so many promises that are there in the word of god in the new testament na bwana yesu ndiye alipigana hii vita hivi tunaona joshua akipigana na kuwin na kuwin bwana yesu aliwin hivyo and right now there is like a whole shamba to be subdivided to god's people according to his promise so in the, this is a, these are spiritual blessings the bible says that we have received every spiritual blessing that are fit for our, that we may live a godly life kwa hivyo mtu yote hawezi akasema anashindwa kuishi maisha ya uungu kwa sababu amepungukiwa kwa hii ama kile hapana yes weakness zetu lakini sio provision ya mungu god has already provided abundantly and so we have like a cake a whole shamba that belongs to us and so maybe the principle also will apply musa aliambiwa aliambia joshua Watu wengi uwapatia shaba kubwa. Watu wa duchache uwapatia shaba chache kidogo. And we can see now spiritually it all depends on your spiritual appetite. The more you are hungry for God, the more you receive of him. The more you are hungry for his blessings, the more you receive. Kwa hivyo inategemea na how much hungry are you. Kuna mtu tu ametosheka na baraka moja tu kuokoka. Na hana shida na kama ame, ni mgojo. Na sema hata tukigojeka tukiwa dunia ni lisawa. Muradi tutu miokoka. Hana haja na hiyo promise ya, ya, ya kupona. Hana promise ya hiyo kitu ingine. Hana, pro, hana hizo mbabozo zingine they don't matter to him or her. But we have now the whole of inheritance ya mungu. The Bible says that we have been translated from the dominion of darkness and now we've been brought into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It has been given to us. Madiko inasema, do not worry you of little flock, for it has pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. Now, it is no longer the land, the physical land, but the kingdom. And what is kingdom? Paul amejaribu kutueleza eleze in the New Testament. Nanasema, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. So, how much of the power of God can you have? How much of the power of God can you have today? Can you access more? Can you access less? It depends on your spiritual appetites. So we have got the whole kingdom now given to us. Jesus has paid it all. The enemies abaso zimebaki kama vile tutaona, ni yale yesu anataka tu, ili atusaidia na sisi kutufunza, jinsi ya kukua vigilant, even as we follow him. But the whole kingdom has been subdued, and it has been given to us. We have the kingdom of God, the kingdom of darkness has been subdued, and we have the kingdom of God. Paul Akasema, like I have said, in one of the descriptions, Akasema, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Now that's why you see even today, hatu jatoshanisha guvu ya mungu hile tukonayo. Kira mtu wakona guvu ki wago chake. And the question is, can I access more? Can I access less? Why am I insisting on the power of God? Because one, 
ndiye imepeonwa kama one of the descriptions za ufalme wa Mungu ambao tumepokea kama lile shaba Joshua alipokea remember that is where i'm drawing this lesson from so we have the kingdom of god and we can assess the kingdom or one of the symbols of the kingdom is the power this is where the power of god dominates so tunaweza tukaulizana basi how do we use the power of god we all know tunahitaji nguvu za Mungu in this world you cannot survive on your own everything in this world will bow to a higher power so in this world kuna nguvu fulani we know the devil is there working and uh, the world itself is a power it's a system so mimi nitaezaje kuto bow to the power of darkness how will i not bow to the power that is in the world if i have or if i am operating under a higher power and that is the power of god that is what i am calling the kingdom which you have been given by jesus christ and so we have the kingdom part of the promise ya mungu ni kwamba we receive power we are going to do the things of god through his power second paul anasema that the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost righteousness peace and joy do you know those are the three things that you not have in this world you there is no source of righteousness in this world whatsoever there is no source of peace in this world whatsoever and there is no source of joy the real joy we have happiness the sources of happiness but the real joy there is no such a source in this world hizo ni vitu sasa zikiziwekwa zote kwenye the kingdom of god and so this is about tunafuata Yesu Kristo na tumekwishapewa ufalme that do not worry you of little frog it has pleased the father to give you the kingdom now the, in this kingdom that is when and where we receive joy that is why as christians our joy is not determined by what we access physically righteousness here too is not uh, based on what we will do physically paul says kama righteousness yetu ni ya vitendo basi hiyo ni bure it is a vain righteousness it comes from faith wewe ni mtakatifu the bible says that jesus was made sin that we may become the righteous not that we may receive the righteousness but that we may become the righteousness of god imagine a person like me becoming the righteousness of god that one cannot happen at the worldly terms it's a gift that is in the kingdom of god So how much of the righteousness can you have we are already given how much joy can you have is it based on sasa umekuwa na nyingi unaweza ukafurahia wakati umepokea vitu nyingi joy ni nyingi hapana we enjoy the kingdom because we have been given it all those things righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit is only vitu ambazo tumepewa na Mungu just like watoto hawa wa Israeli waligawanishiwa shamba wewe pokea shamba pade hap hi na hi na hi We have those benefits and great great blessings in the kingdom of God. And so to that couple anza kusoma tuone Joshua vile aligawanishia kabila ya Juda pokeeni hapa, kabila ya Ruben pokeeni hapa, kabila nyingine sisi hatutagawanishiwa the physical land. If it has to come, it has to come after tumepokea hii ufalme ninaongea. Bible says we seek first the kingdom of God and the rest will be added. So easy it to physical they have to come after. Have you received the first things first? Those are the kingdom matters. The power of God. Be hungry for the power of God. Sasa hivi kama hatuna nguvu ya Mungu, the devil and the world will terrorize us the way they want. Akitaka ugojeke leo, usifanye kitu kesho. Akitaka kukufungia, usihudumu pale kazi akitaka ufute any what the utilizers and the only escape we have is that we have the power of god that dominates over those other kingdoms the reason why nimesema hivyo ni ili tusiigie kusoma haya maneno ama majina ya hapa ya kugawanishiwa shamba alafu tusahau to apply it in our lives that's why i have given it like a, a summary and so let's read like verse 1 of chapter 12 alafu nitajua mahali tutafikisha then we move on it is just an introduction sasa wanagawanishwa Shamba. Now these are the kings of the land whom the people of Israel defeated and took possession of their land beyond the Jordan toward the sun rising from the valley of the Anon to Mount Hamon with all the Araba eastward. Na wameratibiwa hapo wale wafalme wote walishinda na yale mashamba waliweza kupokea. And 
Let me see uh, a verse. Niliona ina, ni muhimu sana tuweze kuisoma pamoja. Kwa sababu there are these there are the many kings. Okay, let me read verse 6. Moses the son of van of the Lord and of the people and the people of Israel defeated them. And Moses the servant of the Lord gave their land for a possession to the Lubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh. Nilikuwa tu nataka nisome hivyo ili niwakumbushe kwamba kabla wavuke Jordan, Jordan imega iko na pande moja na pande nyingine. Kabla wavuke kuna kabila tatu ambazo zili na nusu zilisema zipewe pande moja. That is Lubenites, Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh. Wakasema wapewe pande ile moja. Lakini Musa akawaambia you want to discourage your brothers. Wakasema hapana tutawacha wake zetu na watoto zetu na mifugo wetu pande hii. Sisi wenye vita tutavuka na brothers zetu na tutaenda kuwasaidia kupigana vita. So as tunaona Joshua kigawanisha pande hii, he anagawanishia nine and a half tribes. And then two and a half tribes watarudi na wavuke Jordan warudi pande ile. Na hiyo ndio story imeratibiwa the whole of chapter 12. Let's go to chapter 13. Tuangalie jabu pale tunaweza jifunza nalo kitu. It's a very very interesting uh, scripture all together. Na tutaona ni kwa nini Mungu akaona vizuri atuandikie. Verse 1 of Joshua 13. Now Joshua was old and adv advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, "You are old and advanced in years." And there remains yet very much land to be possessed. Kwenye hiyo verse tunaona ni kama there is some repetition. But like you said, God found it very important to write it there even to, to make sure it is repeated. Joshua ni mzee. Sasa hako kama 100 year old. Ni mzee wa miaka miyamoja. Sababu wameka, wamepigana vita Baka mahali wamefika kutagu kuigia Jordan na ka, vila waligia Canaan. It's like now seven years. So Joshua sasa ni mzee wa mi, miaka miyamoja hivi. Na that is the state, that's the fact that is stated by the scriptures. The scriptures are very, very sincere. Wahali mtu ni mzuri, niadika ni mzuri. Wahali mtu ni young, niadika ni young. Kama mtu ya mezeeka, mezeeka. Na bibiria inaporatibu kwa ba Joshua meshpisha zeeka. Mungu akaja na akarudia the same words. Joshua sasa wewe nimezeeka. Wewe umezeeka na miaka yako imesonga. Na in our society even I hope even in the society then people are not so much willing to be reminded they are old. Na wewe siju unajua lini kwamba unazeeka kwa sababu pasipo kuingilia mtu yote sisi wote tunazeeka. Mtoto akiwa chini ya uh, tuseme miaka miwili Umuri wake nuhesabiwa in na miezi. Sasa hakona 17 months. Hakona 18 months. Haya pia anapo karibia pale kumi. Ana, hata half inakuwa very important. He's seven and half years. Lakini wakati ya sasa anasoga kutoka kumi kuendelea. Sasa inakuwa vigumu sana na sio vizuri. It is not so kind in our society. Kushida kwa bia mtu miaka yaki. God becomes very genuine to Joshua. You are old. Dunazeeka. Na saa zingine hata tusipo taka kujua tunazeeka. Kuna ya zile vitu na watu tunatuko na wao. They keep reminding us tunazeeka. Uh, I noted a very great difference. Hive kalibuni kalibuni. Wakati inakweda kuigia kwa gali unajua. Kwa sababu ya skase te ya wasafiri. Uh, the the thoughts have to call you out to kiwa mbali. Na kitapo halikuwa nasema kuja bradhi. But nimesikia hivi juzo nasema kuja mze. And in the first case, nilikuwa naagalia nyuma, niagalia who is that mzee wa nasema mzee. Nikaona niko peke yangu. Na wengine hata wananijua jina. Halibu mzee. So those people may reminded me, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Wengine wetu tunakubushwa na kio. Nowadays I'm not a fan wa kio sana. Nobody wants to be reminded they are getting old. Mtu mwingine nimepata sijini wapi nilikuwa pale town. Mzee mwingine amereta shida karibu apichape hao vijana kwa kumuita jina mzee peke yake. Na akawakubusha mzee ni yule babu yao kwa nyumbani. Na mimi nilipomwangalia shuali. The guy is old. 
Nani kafikiria to be genuine because nobody feels so nice. To be precise mimi sijuagi miaka yangu kabisa. Date yangu ya kuzaliwa nilipozaliwa kulitokea shida pale pale nyumbani. Na hakukujulikana sana date zangu za kuzaliwa. So today we just guess. So ninajificha jificha hapo karibu lakini nimejificha up to wakati nimeanza kuwa sasa mzee. Uwezi jificha sana. Yes hatu, we don't care when you are born but we can see you are getting old. And the whole thing is this. Ili usije kusikia vibaya. Waka, imagine miaka yako inaweza kwa sababu kwa Mungu it is like in a movie that one year ulitumia ukiwa wakati ulizaliwa ukiwa ulipoenda class 1 ulipoenda class 2 ulipoenda class 3 zote hakuna siku imepotea so hizo siku zote zikiwekwa hapa they be paraded ya 1 ya 2 zote mpaka mahali umefika ni miaka gani unaweza kana useme hii hi, Mungu umeniwekea si zangu sababu because you don't want to identify yourself with the, how old you are today unasema zile miaka ziondolewe unaweza ukakana miaka uliishi so let's us appreciate it because it is God who made sure that day imeisha na ingine ikaisha Ah, kakubaliki na kuligana na Mungu it is a celebration ah, our son amefika hapo na vile amepigana vita nyingi now we can accomplish one, two, three through that person so it is just fine to God it's an accomplishment sababu anaelewa zile vita ziko duniani watoto wangapi wanauawa pale marekani nilisikia over 100 million children they die they are killed actually every year through abortion 100 million they are aborted. Na siku hizi pia niliona sheria ina, inapitishwa ya euthanasia. Eti tukiagalia mzazi wako ama we ukiagaliwa, mtu akiagaliwa aonekane amegojeka, anasubuka subuka, tuna, tunaweza tukamsaidia kufa. Tunamwondolea ile kutabika, tunamwondolea kufa na ndugu asindane. Na ni sheria sasa inapitishwa. Kwa hivyo hautakwama na mgojo wako pale useme hapana mimi naamini hapana. The sheria itakuwa inasema yule mtu asisubuke sana wanadungu wa sidano wanakufa but mungu wakiona wewe amekusaidia na umefika 20, umefika 30 unajua tukifika 30 hatu semagi I am 34 tuna semaga I am 30 pasa yuko 39 I'm in 30 ama unasema I am in, in, uh, tuseme uko, 50, uko 40 uko you are 45 unasema I'm in the be- other side of better side of 30 to God, it's an achievement. It's a great. Ni mungu alipaga hivyo. Sasa tukirudi tuwe watoto tena, hii kazi ya mungu nani atafanya. Na kuna kazi kwa bibiria zinafaa kufanya na waze, shuwele. <laughs> okay. There remains a very much land to be possessed. Umezeeka. Nakini kuna shaba kubwa lazima iwe possessed. God acknowledges. Joshua has gotten old, has become old. Lakini kuna shaba lazima pia yeze kunyakuliwa. Na tuneza tukajiuliza. Kwa ni mungu hakuona Joshua na Zayeka diyo amsaidia kupossess more land by the time he was young? No. It is okay. It is biblical from Genesis that God keeps on burying his servants. But his work continues. Kazi ya mungu wa isimamangi. Ata mungu wa kizika watumishu wake hawa kazi yake inaendelea kwa sababu Mungu aliona aweke mission yake ikiwa mrefu kushida miaka yetu so we will not limit god to give us a vision or a mission that is equal to our life expectancy or our strength the work of god is so much na kwa hivyo sio vibaya kuona kwamba much of the we cannot be limited to dream big kwa sababu tunaona hatutatimiza hapana you just continue dreaming big continue making great plans don't worry about your age the work of God will continue. Na diyo tunaona hata wakati Musa amekufa, actually mungu anakuja kutaganila zia Joshua. Uh, sasa unajua mtumishu wagu Musa amekufa, eh, nataka uinuke uendele na kazi. Tunaona Steph, Stephen ameinuka, jama very bold, anahubiri, bigu inafunguka, lakini anawawa. Mungu anakubali ya wawe the same day. Tunaweza tukasama, oh mungu, we had a great treasure, this servant. Agedereza ijiri, mungu hajari Out of that, that, hawa watu wanampiga mawe hapo Akwana jamaa ata inuwa na itua Paul Ata edereza kazi ya mungu Kwa hivyo tumezika Stephen Lakini kazi ya mungu through Paul inaendelea Paul pia amekufa Anaachia Timothy Mbaka waleo sisi diyo tunahubiri Na sisi kazi ya mungu bado tutaiwache ikiendelea If Jesus studies So it is okay to have To dream big Na kuna kazi nyingi ya mungu Itakuwa bado haijafanywa Tukiodoka dunia so it is not a problem. 
to have great, great dreams that surely you will not accomplish. So let's continue verse 2. This is the land that yet remains. All the regions of the Philistines and all those of the Geshurites, from the Shehor, which is east of Egypt, northward to the boundary of Ekron, it is reckoned as Canaanite. There are five rulers of the Philistines, those of Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gaz, and Eklon, and those of the Avim. In the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Mer Meara, which belongs to the Sidonians, to Afek. Kuna mahali nataka tusome. Kuna mahali Musa, Mungu wa Musa, I mean Joshua. Uh, watcha, 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 watcha to tusome verse 6, verse 5 and 6. And the land of the Gebelites, and all Lebanon towards the sun rising from Balgad below Mount Hamon to the entrance of Hamath. All the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon to Misre for Thaim, even all the Sidonians, Sidonians. I will myself drive, the, drive them out from before the people of Israel. Only allot the land to Israel for an inheritance as I have commanded you. That is the point I wanted to come to get to. Kuna shamba abayo Hata tayari watu hao hauta wafukuza sasa hivi Wewe anza kugawanisha shamba Na kuna shamba about it is already possessed I mean those people The original inhabitants are still there Awa meadikuwa hapo Lakini Joshua nabiwa Iyo pia I will drive it out Na nitapea watoto wa Israeli Hapo Joshua ameodolewa responsibility Lakini kuna kitu wanabiwa As for you You continue allotting Hata kama it is possessed Na ikona watu tayari omeka Wewe gawanisha hiyo shamba. As for now, shamba nyingi, wale watu walikuwa wameka, haipo. Wa watu wameenda, watoto wa Israeli, wataenda uh, to an empty land. But these lands, they are already inhabited. Na wageni. Na Joshua na, anabiwa kabisa vizuri na mungu. Wageni, wata inhabit, I mean, they have already inhabited that land. So as of now, stuck wede upigane na wao. All that I want you to do, I want you to allot or to subdivide it. And it's already occupied. Can, I, can we now shift to our application in the New Testament? Vile tulisema? Tukasema kwamba ours siyo shaba kama hii. Kwamba kanisa sasa lidio, kanisa la, la, la sisi, to the power this whole land. Hata tukipua hiyo teshuali ya watu watuafukuzo, wataenda wapi. What are we going to do with the land? So ours so much is not the physical land. Ours is the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual inheritance, ufalme wa mungu. And ijapokuwa sasa hivi kuna mabomegi mungu wa mekuambia, there are so many things that God has given you as a promise. Much of what God has said is already occupied by others. Kwa mfano mungu waneza kakuambia siku moja, you heard this ministry. But as of now, there is a leader. Ukiwa mdogo and the leader maybe could be getting older. Tuseme ni mzee. Na mungu wa abia a little early. I mean the little Samuel. Nita kupati, uh, wewe di nataka kuwa point after early gets off. Wewe di utaogoza karuda buwana. So God has no limitation ya kukuahidia mambo abayo tayari sasa hivi. They seems that like they are occupied like the positions as a serikali sasa hivi mungu wa kikwabi ya hindi utakuwa president one day that seat will always be occupied kwa hivi itategemea na mungu wakati ya mesema na hile vita na jua tapigana mbaka wakati utaingia pale but never are these things like as they are not occupied they are already occupied there could be spiritual uh, blessings there could be they could also touch on the physical things Right now they are occupied. This whole country, I don't believe there will be a piece of land that is not titled. Zote zikona title. Na zikona wenyewe. Atakama haina title, inasemekana hini ya mtu plan. So if God is promising you a land, if God is promising you something, that one haita suzuiria mungu. Kwa ba tayari sasa hivi na mtu, does not hinder God to give to you when the right time comes. So I meendelea kuambiwa vile atakawanisha shamba, and uh, because of time, I was so much willing to agree another very, very interesting and very good character. A buyer that to funza mabokada dio to funge. Iyo te ameandika verse 32 ya muisho ya Joshua 13. 
Anasema, these are the inheritances which Moses distributed in the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan, east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses gave no inheritance. The Lord God of Israel is their inheritance, as he said to them. Something also very interesting. Kuna kabila moja katikati ya zile kuminambili, haiku wawiwa shamba. Ata kama ishaba ni kubwa, kuna kabila moja mugu alikuwa mesema, hawa wasipewe shamba. Madiko inasema vizuri, God, the Lord God of, their Israel, God of Israel is their inheritance. Yani iwe, haujapewa kitu, kama sasa hivi, most of us are, depending, are dependent on this promise. We may not have so much our fathers left us. Kwa hivi hata ukienda pale kuwabia babako wa kukawie shamba. He may not have, ama haki kukawie na kukawie hile iko kure isha. Sasa hata ukiuza unashiru utauza pisangapi. Na utauza uje ulipe hapa lenti miezi bili. Sasa uwe hauna shamba na hauna pesa. The tribe of Levi, God was their inheritance. Mungu akasema, mimi diyo, I am your inheritance. To other people, they got the land of God. Because wakati mungu wame drive out the inhabitants, hili shaba likawa lake. Sasa nalipea watoto wa Israeli. So the other tribes got the land of God. But to the tribe of Levi, they got the God of the land. Walimpu chukua mungu ama they got the God of that land. Na kuna kitu tutaona kwamba, wakati kila kabila iligawanishiwa shamba, mungu wakasema kue na cities katha za Levites, watakua na kaa pale. Kwa hivyo pade hii, kuna cities za Levites. Kwa nini mungu wakasema ziwe distributed, wasikai mahali pamoja? Ili the rest of the tribes wakifanya kazi as they work, there is worship continuing on. So God brought the mixture of both work and worship. Lakini worship ifanyo na wale ni metenga wafanya worship, the Levites, na kazi ifanyo na hizi kabila zingine. Wale walikuwa wakulima, walime. Wale walikuwa vugaji, wafuge. But they still worship around. And so we have that advantage of that integration today. And your Paul and her sisters, and I believe so much. That is why it featured in the New Testament, because the Holy Spirit wanted us now to know that it is no longer, there is no longer that separation. God has given me that integration. As I worship, or being a worshiper, I still also work. Now Paul, at a, on Friday, kuna verse to Lisoma. Paul and Asema, he alikuwa nafanya kazi na mikono yake mwenyewe, ili but beyond kujipatia chakula asaidi ata na wengine so it is no longer that I am a priest I should not work and, if, and I can only be helped mimi labda nisaidiwe tu siwezi nikasaidia wengine apana there, there is a combination of both the work and worship both the work and worship uh, wacha tuende chapter 14 mawa mendelea kupewa shamba sasa hapa diyo Watoto wa Israeli wameanza kutajwa na kuambiwa nyinyi pokeni hapa, nyinyi pokeni hapa. And verse 1, niendele kidogo. I want us to check on a guy called Caleb. But first of all, let's read verse 1. They are down. And, they are, and these are the inheritances which the people of Israel received in the land of Canaan, which Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers, houses of the tribes of the people of Israel distributed to them. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded Moses for the nine and half tribes. For Moses had given an inheritance to the two and half tribes beyond the Jordan, but to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the people of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and no portion was given to the Levites in the land, but only cities to dwell in with their pasture lands for their cattle and their substance. The people of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses, they allotted the land. When then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh Balnea, concerning you and me. I was 40 years old, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Balnea to spy out the land, 
and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses saw on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day 85 years old. I am still as strong to this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then, for war and for going and coming. So, now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day day how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities it may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out as the Lord said then Joshua blessed him and he gave him Hebron to Caleb he gave Hebron to Caleb the son of Jephne for an inheritance so Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephune the Kenizzite to this day because he wholly followed the Lord the God of Israel now the name of Hebron formerly was Kiriath Abba this Abba was the greatest man among the Anakim and the Lord had rest from war. Uyu jamaa wetu hapa anaitwa Caleb. Wengi wetu tunaweza mkumbuka kwa sababu wakati Musa aliwatuma hawa watu, Joshua na Caleb na wengine kumi, walituma kuspy the land in the book of Numbers in the book of Exodus. Walipotumwa wawili wakaileta uh, habari iliyokuwa nzuri. Wakasema ndio tumepata kuna majitu kule but that land belongs to us, as the Lord told us. Lakini pia, wale kumi wakasema apana, wale watu, inchi ni nzuri, lakini wale majitu watatumaliza. So we should not proceed, go, proceed there. Na tunajua kuna vitabaya sana ilifanyika. There is something that happened very bad. Kwa sababu mungu alisikia vibaya of the ten people who gave the long testimony. Na watoto wa mungu walipo kuwa incited, wakaogopa, wakauliza musa kuwa nini ulitutowa kule, wakararamika na mungu waka, ikabidi ya wazibu. And the lesson that we are getting is that Caleb and Joshua, wakasababu hao diyo wawiri mungu alisema, these are the only two people. Of all the congregation ilitoka misiri, all the other two people, about the over 20 years, wataingia kana. Na sasa tunaona uh, Caleb, amesikia sasa shabadi inagawanishwa, amekuja wa kwanza kwanza he came first na akaanza kuwabia Joshua unakumbuka mimi na wewe by this time Caleb is 85 years ni mzee wa miaka 85 na Joshua wako karibu 100 hapo and so namwambia namkubusha unakumbuka hiyo siku ile vile tulienda eh unakumbuka vile Musa alisema alisema hiyo shaba nimekanyanga na miguu yangu hiyo atanipatia kwa sababu nimemfuata Mungu na moyo wangu wote na hiyo hiyo ushikirie Caleb is not bragging he's not bragging that phrase sana. He is not bragging that he followed the Lord with the whole of his heart. He is just giving a testimony because this is exactly what happened. Sisi tulitoma na Mungu, twende tuangalie Shaba. Na yeye amesema hii Shaba atatupatia. So it does not matter vile mimi nitasikia ndani. They reported on what God had said other than what they saw. And naturally all these people waliona kitu kimoja. Waliona majitu na wakaona shamba. But in their hearts, the way they processed that information brought all the difference. Wagino waliona mugu, mugu yao aliyo sema ni kidogo kuliganisha na hizi majitu makubwa. Na wengine wawili wakaona mugu mkubwa comparing with these giants. Actually walisema, awa ni kama mikate kwetu, tupewe tukule. We will fight them. It's like bread to us. That was Caleb. The, word, the name Caleb means bold, impetuous. And he's saying to Joshua, Kubuka vile tulisemezana. Amekuja ata kabla ya kabila na kwanza. Kugawiwa shaba, the tribe of Judah. It is the biggest, so come first Judah. Ni wape kabla ipewe, Caleb comes first. And he's that bold man. Na amesema, you know what? Tulituma nikiwa 40 years. Sasa nikiwa niko 85. Na nasema ni 85, I am as strong kama vile nilikuwa 40. Biologically, he is not talking fact. Sababu mzee wa 85, 
hawezi kuwa strong kama kijana ya 40 lakini anasema kwa moyo wake wote and he's not lying anasema i am as strong to this day as i was in the day that moses sent me my strength now is as my strength was then for war and for going and coming and there lies a very great hidden treasure for us anasema hivi mimi ni mzee wa miaka 85 na niko na nguvu ya kwenda vitani na kurudi kama vile nilikuwa nikiwa 40 na tukagiri hapa kwa sababu wale watu walikuwa na nyama kama hizi zetu tu kwa hivyo they were not operating in other bodies but it is not biologically fine kusema mzee yule ako strong kama mtu wa 40 and so why is he talking this way is he talking the truth yes why and how this is the reason why and I say I am as strong to this day as I was in that day the, this, this is the question why was Caleb strong then alikuwa strong kwa sababu gani does the bible talk about their muscles walipo tumwa kwenda kanan they were not chosen because of their muscles no the strength of those 12 men and actually the two Caleb and Joshua the bible says mahali pale walipo rudi na kupeana ripoti walipo rudi na kupeana ripoti the bible says that Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit and now we see Caleb is claiming I am as strong now nikiwa ite five kama saile hiyo strength ni gani it is not the strength of man Caleb is talking about the strength in which he depended that day is the same same strength that he has now because God has not changed nimezeeka dio but God is the same and the bible says that many people put their trust in the chariots but my strength is in the lord my god so he's talking about the strength where did he draw the strength the strength was not physical he's not talking so much about the physical strength he's talking about the strength that was in him that made him to see the giants to be like grasshoppers to kill a dog na wao wakajiona mgoni mkubwa in actual fact walipo rudi na kupeana ripoti hawakusema wale majitu tulipo wagalia na sisi tukaona sisi tuliona tuko tuko na masos ijapokuwa zile ni vitu kubwa tutazipiga apana the report they gave was yes those are their giants there but we are going to take it as the lord has given to us they never forecast unto themselves so the strength that Caleb is talking about was not the strength that was coming from inside of them the new testament applies perfectly whatever god has called us to accomplish if you look unto the strength you have now you will not do anything you will not accomplish anything but god expects kama huyu mzee ako 85 in the spiritual realm we can all access the strength of god why we don't depend on ourselves so unaweza kuwa mwana youth na Mungu anakuabiri kazi yamekuwekea ni kubwa sana. Wewe usiangalie useme wacha kwanza pasta wafanye na mimi sasa nitakuja pale. If God calls you to do that work, move straight and go, and, and do it. Go ahead and do it. He saying, you know, I tell you in that verse, I generated God helped me to acquire so much ya kunisaidia kwa moyo. That my strength, I am as strong. So how are you strong today? I am strong because the Lord is my strength. I have not received the spirit of fear, but I have received the spirit of power. The kingdom that I have received is not a matter of talk, but as a kingdom that a matter of power. It is the kingdom of, of power. I have received a spirit that do not make me weak. Even if I am weak, he is strong. And so that is where our dependence comes in. And he continues to say, my strength now is as my strength then. Which strength is he talking about? Sababu wa meongea kuhusu strong, then he's talking about my strength. Because he's not addressing the same thing. He's not talking about the same muscles. Those things, those ninis, two terms are different. Even in Hebrew application, they are different. I am strong now, kama vile musa lintuma, and the strength I had then, dio nikonayo sahi. He's talking about something else. He's talking about the strength that God has given him. And he's talking for war, and for going, and for coming. 
ni zile vita sasa rohoni tumepewa kupigana we depend on the strength of god paul is saying the battles that we are fighting are not physical so hata kama tungekuwa na muscles kwenye vita za rohoni disqualified we depend on the strength of the spirit now time is fading me but allow me to say something about Caleb then i am done uh, and as, something very important about Caleb Caleb is doing something very important he is depending on a very good memory Caleb has a very accurate memory so he is depending on he is observing unto the past very carefully then he's looking around today very candidly with a lot of strength with a lot of boldness and then he's looking at the future with courage na ni mzee about memory wasomi wanasema yale mambo yote tunaona na tunayasikia ni vigumu sana iondoke kwenye mawazo yetu the problem is ijapokuwa iko kwenye memory the problem ni ni recalling sisi kukumbuka lakini iko tuliona we can only recall like 30% of that information. It's a very strong, strong tool Mungu akibariki kwako especially if you use it positively. The strength that Caleb is talking about and I kubuka vizuri and he is now very bold talking to Joshua without fear. And he knows God, he expects God to rubber stamp what he's saying because he's very acute in memory. Ajapokuwa ni mzee lakini anakumbuka vizuri. What did God tell you wakati alikuita? What did God tell you wakati ulikuwa very weak, wakati ulikuwa pale chini? Please keep that in mind. Paul anamwambia Timothy, you remember the words nilikunenea wakati nilikuwekea mikono? Those words of prophecy, use them to wage good warfare. But if Timothy forgets, a problem. So, wakati unasikia Mungu aki akikunenea maneno mengi hata kama saa hizi anakunenea kukukumbusha nguvu ambayo unafaa ku depend nayo ni nguvu yake wakati ulikuwa very down akakwambia mimi ndio nitakuinua wakati ulikuwa hujioni kama unafaa akakwambia hata nikataka kutumia sana those words are very very pivotal wakati moja in your life sababu you depend on them to either fall there or move on so Caleb looks unto the past all of us may, you know it's good to remember wakati mahali Mungu alitotoa usisahau zile nyakati na maeneo Mungu amekupelekea God has brought you something else tunaweza tukachukua kwenye Caleb ni this person he has refused to settle on the norm he has he still sees something else needs to be done something else needs to be done i don't know whether alikuepo Mungu akiambia Joshua wewe umezeeka na hata kuna shaba haijanyakuliwa lakini we Joshua Mungu hajawaambia Joshua apigane apigane vita nyingine sana so Joshua wakati wako kumzika umefika lakini Caleb he is coming out now he is actually distancing himself from that statement Mungu ameambia Joshua pale juu Joshua umezeeka vita zingine utapigana Caleb comes up and says ninajua much of the land ile nitakuitisha it is already occupied na Mungu amesema ataipeana pia mimi ndio nataka kwenda kupigana I'll go. Joshua, he, Caleb is not demanding the army general to go with him. Who was the army general then? Joshua. Hamwabi Joshua ukuje unisaidia vita. He's saying I will go. Because he refuses to settle on the norm. Do you know historia wale watu wote tunajua. Yule wale watu wote unaweza ukakumbuka in a certain generation. Even in the spiritual realm ama political kwa sababu every time tuseme kwa wakati wa Martin Luther ama tuseme wakati wa kiongozi fulani wale wanajulikana by that time those people were living sikulikuwa dunia imejaa watu kwa nini all of them hatujui majina yao kwa nini hata tunaweza ulizana hapa nani anaweza akajiwa jina ya mtu mmoja of the 12 guys walitumwa na Musa to spy the land nani anajua mtu mwingine isipokuwa Joshua na Caleb most of us tutasema bible hijaandika imagine imeandika hapo hapo tu imeandika Joshua na Caleb imeandika the 12 but we don't know them why History will always favor those people who start out from the norm. Wale watu wanaodokea the crowd and they do something extra. How do your history in favor? Actually, today if we don't if we do things like everyone else is doing, I am telling you, hakuna mtu atatukumbuka. Na sisi tu tunafanya dhabi, but if we do things the same way, abaya kwa sababu watu ndivyo wanafanya na sisi tufanye. Hivi ndivyo watu wanafanya na sisi tufanye. If we do that 
This is the fact. History will never favor us to be reminded, to be remembered. We will never, never be remembered. It is those people who does things selectively. They get out of the norm and they do things, especially now in the spiritual realm, as God tells them to do. Irrespective of what others will say or do, they don't care. They start out. They say and they do what God does. Kama Stephen agekata kuhubiri na boldness. Hage wawa na leo hatuge wai kumjua. So ijapokuwa liwawa na kaida binguni, we know him today. He does what was very, very unique in those times. Paul, the only reason why Paul tunamkubuka vizuri, na hakuwa muhubiri, he was not the only preacher then. Kulikuwa na watu wengine mugu wa meinua. But one of the reasons why Paul tumemuona na tunamjua sana hata watoto wa Sardis kuru wanajua Paul is because he stood out like God called him to. Akakata, hata wakati mwingi ya mechallenge that notion ya kufanya mabo kikawaida. Amakata. Nyinyi munataka, you know, I do not live or do things to please men. Anakata. I don't do things as others do. He did as God wanted him to do. And so that is how history will favor us. If we follow God, holy, like Caleb is saying, Mungu ametuabia tufanya hivi, let us do it. Not by our strength, but with the strength that comes from the Spirit of God. So Caleb, vile Joshua lipewa hiyo maneno yote, hata haku ongea. Iyo wakati yote ni Caleb anaongea. Joshua meikubuka vizuri. Madiko inasema verse 13, he blessed Caleb. Ubalikiwe sana. Ubalikiwe my son. 85 years son, old son. <laughs> and uh, nilikuwa nataka kutaja verse chapter 15, kusababu it is like the same, lakini naona muda uta, uta nilusu. But allow me to mention something, other than kuiruka, it is about Caleb here. That is verse 13. Verse 13, Nisome 14. According, that is chapter 15, Sasa. According to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, he gave to Caleb, the son of Jephne, a portion among the people of Judah, Kiriath Alba, that is Hebron. Abba was the father of Anak. And Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai, the descendants of Anak. And he went up from there against the inhabitants of Debil. Now the name of Debil formerly was Kiriath Sefa. And Caleb said, whoever smites Kiriath Sefa and takes it to him, I'll give Aksaf, my daughter, as wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it and he gave him Akash, Aksa, his daughter, as wife. So what I wanted to finish up with, to Naona Caleb, Hakua Tunem Domo, chapter 14, ameongea kasema niko na nguvu ya kwenda vitani tunaona actually amepewa inchi alisema i want a new challenge na hiyo challenge ni inchi yenye majitu yao ni majitu unaona hapo wameratibiwa wame verse 14 sons of anak were giants and imagine this 85 year old man he is asking for a new challenge other than asking for a very peaceful land joshua unajua sasa tumezeeka eh Na mungu alisema tatupatia shaba, eh, mimi nataka kashaba pale mudhaiga, nitulie. Na uhakikishe, hakuta kuwa na magalimigi na piga honi pale, sababu nataka kutulia, nimekwisha zaeka. This man is asking for new challenges in life. Why? Because he is dependent on the power of God. He do not fear. Tulisema jina yake, it means bold. And the challenge he takes, he conquers, because God will never ashamed his strength. Mungu hata waibisha guvu zake. The reason why nimesema your statement is because if I am back in doing something for God with my strength, God is not bound to support that. God is not bound to support something that you do for him with your strength. But if God gives you an assignment and you depend on him, these are the people the Bible says, that hope, those such people, they'll never be disappointed. And so, kwa sababu ya wakati, to naona that whole chapter 15, Caleb amepewa na katuma mstiana wake aka oh, uyo mstiana amepeanwa kwa kijana aliye saidia Caleb vitani aka mwabia Caleb babaki amuogeze shamba na wakapewa shamba zingine abayi likuwa na upper and lower springs verse 19 na wakamaliza kugawiwa shamba 
chapter 15. Lakini verse 63 inasema, the last verse, but the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the people of Judah, could not drive out. So the Jebusites dwell with the people of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. I say me to this day, in December to the time this book was written, kwa sababu wakati wa Daudi, diyo Jerusalem ilieda na ikanyakuliwa. So, ili kuhakikisha kwamba vile mungu ya likuwa mesema hiyo shambai yote atawapatia. So, up to there, tunona wamekupewa mashamba. I will not continue from there. But maybe I have reminded you one or two things that uh, could be important for you today, especially depending on the power and the strength of God in your life. Whatever you are going through, you need more power to help you. And that power is not to come from any other source. It is to come from the Holy Spirit whom you have been given as an inheritance, as a guarantee to everything. Kira kitu kingine ya chote, abacho mungu wa amesema na amereta hakikisho by giving us the deposit of the Holy Spirit. So we are such blessed. We are such blessed. We don't depend on the physical walls. Dio tuweze ku, ku, at least kupata kakitu. Ah uh ah, -uh. Jesus has already done it. And our trust in him has made sure we have received the kingdom and the wealth in that kingdom. Na tukuisha pokea that kingdom, madiko imetuahidi in Matthew 6.33, even the rest we are going to have. I never wanted to dwell so much on the rest. Mine was so much to insist that we have the kingdom. And we don't have to fight for the kingdom. We have not to fight while inside the kingdom. Because Jesus has done it all. Bwana tubaliki sana. Na haya yote nimeongea. Nimeongea kwa sababu na haswa kwa wale abo tumekuisha mpokea kristu. Tumebalikiwa sana. Shetani na guvuzake zote. Akituangalia tukiwa dani ya ufalme. He is not able to do anything to us. Kwa sababu wagekua na hile guvu ya kutufanyia kila kitu Sahi hatugekua hapa Hatugekua hapa It is the power that is in the kingdom of God We are so much blessed The New Testament church And to God be glory, the glory for allowing us to really learn that Na kwa wale abao hatuja okoka You are very much exposed Not because God is not powerful Or is not willing to help you But God is willing to help us So much and so long as we depend on him there is the strength that we received depend on that same same strength and your, your strength is going to revive in Jesus name so let us pray and uh, you can also pray that God may increase this power to you it is not limited it is not limited I want to be as strong as when you called me I want to be as strong as when you were talking to me and promising me great things I want to continue in this strength even when the physical age continues on. In the name of Jesus, that I will accomplish all, that I will do everything. One day that we have run the race, to memorize kila kazi yabawa mungu wa metupatia kufanya. Na kazi ya mungu itaendelea. Ijapokuwa sisi yonye tutapumzika kazi, lakini kazi ya mungu itaendelea. Buwana tunakushukuru. Kwa kazi njema bao lianza katika maisha yetu. You have revived us by reminding us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we can depend on you again because you have not changed. You are that God of Joshua and Caleb. That is the strength and the spirit that we need this morning. The strength of boldness. And if any one of us who was listening, Lord, has been weak and heavy laden, may they receive the rest in the spirit of God. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bon